I'm Scott Allen-Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America. Today, I've got a viewer question asking about an investment idea or a business opportunity or more of what they are thinking and wanted me to take a look at it in the response question. So we're going to be digging into the idea of building a hotel in the beach community of Popoyo here in Nicaragua on today's show. So let's get right to it right after the bump. It is an absolutely gorgeous, quiet, relaxing, cool afternoon here on Thursday. I'm doing this between the live streams. If you're watching on Thursday, I did a double live stream day and I am making this video in between those two live streams. I do not have my IV out yet. My knee is still bandaged. That is supposed to be, hopefully, I'm, my last debriding should be in about an hour and this should be coming out today. I should be done with my medicine. Fingers crossed that everything is done. I hope been healing pretty well and uh my father is home from the hospital and he maybe he'll make the live stream later on this afternoon we will already have known by then but today's viewer question comes from surround spray foam insulacio 5938 uh hi scott my wife and i are going to papoyo nicaragua in january for a month papoyo is a beach community on the north side of the departmento of rivas We've become super interested in relocating to Nicaragua over the past year. Our plan is to purchase a small hotel or property on the beach to turn into a small hotel. We are thinking roughly 12 rooms with bathrooms. I have years of construction experience and building knowledge from here in Canada. I'd be looking to put these into use for a ground-up project or a renovation to an existing building my wife and I find suitable. Our plan would be to live off of an investment. We understand life in Nicaragua, especially in a beach community, will be a much slower pace than we have become accustomed to in Canada. We want that. I'm reaching out to you to learn anything and everything I can. By the way, your videos have been a great help to my wife and we appreciate your, to me and my wife and we appreciate your channel. Well, thanks guys. That's awesome. So Papoyo, let's start there. This is a mid-sized beach community. It's very similar to Las Benitas in size. It's a bit farther to the south, pretty popular with expats. You're going to find a lot of people heading down there. So I have not done a business analysis of that beach specifically. So I don't have exact numbers on the amount of tourists that are coming and going. Those are things you're definitely going to want to do some research on uh, and spend some time taking a look at. Certainly visit Las Pinitas, which is here in the Leon area, Papoyo being again in the Tola subset of the Departamento of Rivas. Uh, but it is one of the uh, popular but still relatively lightly used beaches. So a lot of opportunity down there for sure, and a lot of people you know, have this dream of being on a beach like that. I completely understand. I'm here on the Las Pinitas beach. So let's talk about some of these opportunities. So the first thing is looking at getting into an existing or building a beach location. Certainly there are places that exist on all of these beaches that already exist. As with everything in Nicaragua, the current uh, real estate climate is heavily depressed. So anything that you can buy that already exists, you're going to get for pennies on the dollar. So if something was built for, let's just throw out out some numbers. It was built for 300000 recently. Chances are you're going to be able to buy that for at least uh, no more than $200,000. you are going to be looking at a significant discount on anything that is pre-existing. If you find an empty lot, you may get a small discount on that. For example, a beachfront location, just an empty lot might be uh, $30,000 normally. Maybe it's a little bit depressed right now. You can get it for $25,000. Those, those numbers are going to be small, but it's not going to be overpriced. Right? Well, it shouldn't be. The market value is not above market. And uh, uh, if, if you are um, building yourself, though, building materials and labor and all that is at normal rates. So you're not going to be getting a discount. So if you want to build that $300,000 place that theoretically we used in our first example, that's going to cost you $300,000 to build. That's what sets that $300,000 value. So if you're looking from a pure business perspective, in one case, you're spending $300,000 and the other, you're spending $200,000 to have the same starting point. So that's an important consideration that anything that you're doing where you're using all your building supplies and having to take time to renovate, that's going to be costly. Also, there's lead time into doing any of those things. So just be prepared that if you want to build or renovate that you're going to purchase, tie up your, your funds, and then you're going to need to spend time doing that construction to get things ready. So just 
make sure you're mentally prepared for that and normal. Uh, if you've done this before, those would be things you're ready for. But for a lot of people, they may not have thought through how there could be a long lead time to getting a new hotel up and running. They think, well, I can just do this in a month or so. Chances are it's going to take quite a bit of time. That is a normal thing. Now, it's also worth noting, everybody who comes down to a place like Nicaragua, the first thing that they're always going to think of is opening restaurants, hotels, bars, things like that on the beach, surf businesses, things like that, because it's the dream, right, to live on the beach, to earn money by living in paradise and not having to go into the city, not having to do a faster pace of life and so forth. And of course, your ability to live here much more cheaply than uh, in the United States, that's, that's a big deal. I'm assuming the U.S., right, more than Canada, whatever. And um, you, so you don't need to earn as much. Uh, you don't need to work as hard. You, you, there's a lot of things. However, you also have to keep in mind that everybody wants to do that. So you're up against incredibly stiff competition. And that includes not only expats, but locals as well, who all are hoping to find jobs and find ways to, uh, to earn a living um, and be able to live here as well. So of course, one of the benefits to opening a hotel is that you will have an investment. So you can start talking about investment residency instead of regular residency. That's a nice bonus. And of course, you will be naturally creating jobs, whether they're construction jobs, made jobs, reception jobs, whatever, all of those things add up and uh, help contribute to the economy. So that's absolutely wonderful, the long term effects that you can have. But it's important to keep this perspective. Absolutely, everyone wants to run this kind of business, and there is an endless supply of people who are willing to do so without living off of it. So uh, beach hotels have a tendency to have a lot of stiff competition from people who don't need to make profit. And so anyone who wants to live off of uh, that investment, that's a little bit more difficult because you're trying to eke out a living um, off of the margins that for a lot of people don't exist. Now that that doesn't mean that there can't be any margins for you, but be aware that this is a very standard problem. People assume that every business that they see on the beaches, they, they you know, come and visit and you see beautiful hotels and uh, you come to Las Pinitas, for example, and you see Suyapa, which has been there for forever. And you see a whole bunch of places, one right after another. You think all these places have been in business for many years. They must be making money. No one's expecting them to be making someone rich, but they may, they must be paying their bills. They must be keeping food on the table. Someone finds the investment worth while having and you can actually go for a very long stretch down Las Benitas and not find a single business that is actually making money. They are all owned by people uh, who either bought them decades ago and just have been unwilling to get rid of it. Uh, one of the famous places uh, loses money, but the guy keeps it because it is uh, uh, his private memorial to his wife. It was her project decades ago. Others are kept just because people want a place to go and call their own or whatever, and they're not looking to make profit. And so you can find a lot of the competition down the beach. None of them are making money. They're often well-established and have large amounts of clientele. So in order to actually be able to make money to live off of, not only do you have to uh, do something that, that allows you to make profit where they are not, but you need to do so while either cannibalizing their existing uh, customers or finding a way to draw in new customers, which of course you can do, but that is an additional challenge that you may not be thinking of. There is not really a shortage of places to stay on the beaches uh, that gets filled in very, very quickly. What there actually is is uh, hotels and restaurants that go out of business all the time because they find that they can't keep the lights on and they can't find enough people willing to run at a loss to keep them open um, to compete with the places that that are doing that. And so there's there's a it, it, very importantly, I don't want anyone to go into especially the beach businesses thinking that this will be easy or thinking that this is something that other people are able to do and make money. There are, of course, exceptions. There are places where people are making money. At least we're told theoretically uh, that some people have gotten really lucky and they put in a lot of work themselves. They put in a lot of effort. They're marketing heavily and they're able to, to make some money. I don't know if they're making real profits. I don't know if they're justifying the cost, but they are able to um, at least give the impression that they are maintaining uh, some amount of profitability. Of course, most of these places are private. And so just like a lot of places assume ones that I know are making money when they are not, I'm assuming that they are making money. We don't know that that is true. Right? So, so um, I want that to be very clear, right? I am not personally aware 
of any place on the beaches where people are reliably able to go in, invest in a business and make money. And this is important because when we're talking about like maybe you're going to build a new place, if you're going to spend 300,000, that means you spent 100,000 over places that are not making money that are only spending 200,000. Right? So that's already puts you on a backpedal. If you need to be closed for a while, that puts you on a backpedal. And from a purely business perspective, uh, when you are um, investing in, in something like a hotel, you have to compare that same money. Let's say that the total money you're going to put in is a half million dollars. Okay, so uh, you put in a half million dollars to the hotel, and how much are you going to be able to get returns out of that after how much time? Compare that to putting that money into something like an S&P 500 index fund and see how much money that money should return as a baseline with you not working at all. No risk, no effort, just put it in. It needs to significantly beat that or, and this is okay, but or you are not living off of the hotel, you are living off of consuming that investment and the hotel is a uh, uh, kind of a myth on top of it, it's smoke and mirrors, it makes it look like that's what's actually doing the work, but it is actually just your money uh, being consumed, maybe very, very slowly, but if it's not beating that S&P 500 index number, you are actually consuming your investment and you are working for free, or if you're not matching it, you're actually paying to work. So be aware a lot. I mean, the average, the the vast majority of people who would do this would end up in the situation of paying to work. And so defining that the thing that you're looking for is a slower pace of life, you may be holding retirement in your hand and buying a hotel, maybe giving away your retirement nest egg in order to be stuck in a situation where you may not be able to uh, retire, but instead are stuck in a new rat race that you create for yourself. So be very cautious about that. And of course, if your dream is to own a hotel, of all people, I understand that, right? I've done the same thing. If, um, you know, you're, you're not doing this because, uh, you know, you would like you'd be willing to work hard and be stressed and put lots of time into it rather than getting to relax and getting to retire because it just sounds exciting. Fantastic. This could be a way to control your retirement and, and simply get more enjoyment out of it. Absolutely. If that's uh, who you are, then then this is a perfect way to go. But it is important to be very, very cautious about how this works. Also worth noting, traditionally, the number of rooms you could have without causing additional tax overhead is nine on the beach. There's been some changes, so the whole 12 thing may work out fine, but don't be surprised to find that the places you are either going to find that are pre-existing all limit themselves to nine or fewer rooms, or that you end up with some tax implications that make it not make sense to go beyond nine rooms. Simply build that into your thinking. That's probably okay at this point. That probably is not going to apply to you uh, anymore. That is a thing that has been changing, but it has been a historical thing, and it's worth noting that it may still exist and apply to you in the future. A lot of times when looking at going into something like a beach hotel, the thought process that people have is that, well, if they invest in a hotel and they put a lot of work into upgrading it and then it ends up not working out, they're simply able to sell it and they'll be able to move on and it, it's really not a very high risk. In general, you probably will be able to sell a beach hotel. However, in many of the beaches, the hotels go for years without being able to be sold. And of course, they generally have tax liabilities and so forth. So be very cautious that you don't end up in a situation where you're unable to close your hotel. You're unable to stop the bleed because the taxes have to keep being paid or the place needs to be watched over because you have not been able to sell it yet. So um, I know places like one that I purchased recently went through seven years of having to pay for a cuidador. That's the caretaker to live on the property and take care of it. And during that time, the value of the property deteriorated by about 75% simply because it sat and was exposed to the elements. And while there was a person there living to make sure it didn't fall down and they made sure things were not being stolen, the place was struck by lightning during that time. It did take a lot of rain damage. It did take a lot of weather damage, just a lot of salt in the air. And so the place just deteriorated over time to the point where the roofs had to be replaced, the, the floors had to be replaced, entire levels of the building had to be torn out out and thrown away because they just 
don't hold up over time. And so very commonly here in Nicaragua, if you do decide you need to sell a place, you're often stuck holding onto it for a number of years. And the cost of holding onto it, while not crippling in most cases, does have a bit of cost that you may not be expecting, that you may have to employ people to stay there full time. You don't want squatters moving in and ending up getting the ownership of your property because no one's been there. And you don't want the place to fall apart before you're able to sell it. And often you're going to sell it at a fraction of the value that you had paid for it. This is just the way that it works. So if you're dropping $200,000 on a place and the business doesn't make it, people will look at your purchase number and say, well, you spent 200. It wasn't worth that. I won't give you above 160. You may be looking at a 20% drop in value simply because your business failed. And they're going to say, well, why would my business do any better than yours? I have to get the place for less money and take less risk. And then I'm willing to take on the chance that the business probably won't make it for me either, but I have less into it. So at least it's an opportunity. And what are what are your options other than to just hold on to it and keep operating? So we see this time and time again. And so I, I caution you to be very, very careful. I love the idea. I love that you may be creating employment. I love that you have this idea of going to a slower lifestyle, which we need to talk about and uh, you know, beach life and all that, absolutely fantastic. And this could work for you. I don't want to be a naysayer and say, this can't work. It can. I, I see places on the beach that seem to be limping along. They're putting in a ton of work themselves. They're very stressed, very angry, not happy with their lives. That has become very apparent, right? They're angry that businesses next to them are doing well. They're angry that other businesses have popped up, that things are changing, that they don't have control over much larger areas than uh, they do. They, they Beach is not what they were anticipating. Um, and so we see the people with businesses that are limping along and trying to actually use them as income. And quite often, you're, you're, if you have those kinds of people in your community, you're often going to find that they're they're very stressed. Um, they're anything but avoided the rat race. They they may have exacerbated the rat, rat race for themselves. And you're up against quite often an awful lot of people who are committing crimes such as tax evasion or employment fraud in order to try to cut corners. And the problem with that is that uh, of course they take on great amount of risk. Well, the, the real problem is that they're doing damage to the community, of course, right? But the the risk from a business perspective is that it's just a matter of time before one of those employees that is described realizes that they're not doing something that they need to do and they're going to blow the whistle on them because they're angry because they didn't get their severance package or they didn't get the raise they were expecting or they're just angry that they didn't get a job. All it takes is someone in the community not getting offered a job that they think they're offered and they you know, call for an audit. And if, if all your uh, I's are not dotted and T's are not crossed, that can go poorly. And that is a common thing that many of the businesses that seem to be surviving are often doing so by playing a dangerous game of trying to get as much money out of the system before getting caught as they can. And quite often when you see stressed places, that's the path that they're taking. Um, and so that's a that's not a relaxing beach life kind of vibe. And not that, of course, that you would consider doing that. The problem is, is that your competition beach businesses are often doing that. And you're caught in a position of having to pay full prices while they are not. And you have to make the choice of knowing that that is what's going on. Are you going to tell someone or are you going to look the other way and hope that someone catches them? And in the meantime, you're going to lose business and lose money in just waiting for them to get caught because they are literally stealing from you as well as from their own employees and from the people of Nicaragua. And so very difficult things that can come up. There is in very reality is that running a business anywhere comes with a lot of stress and drama. Doing so in the third world, doing so in Nicaragua, while Nicaragua itself is lower stress than the United States or Canada in most cases, running a business here is probably not any lower stress than doing so in the US or Canada. There's so much less money to work with. There's so much less intrinsic knowledge of the market because of where we come from as a background. Those things naturally add a lot of stress. And small communities like beach communities in Nicaragua are very very famous for being full of drama, both local drama between like your workers and the people in the community and drama between the uh, the expats and the investors in the area as well. And so uh, as someone who does this, who has multiple hotels, who works in the beaches, who's, who's done a lot of time in this, it is something that I love doing. I find that what we do is valuable. I think we make a, an important contribution to our community. Um, I, I would not want to discourage someone from going down this path. However, I don't do it to get out of the rat race. I don't do it to have a more relaxed lifestyle. 
we constantly talk about our willingness to take on the risk and stress and the huge amount of effort that it takes to do this and how much we would have more financial power, how much more financial stability if we hadn't done that. If we simply invested or did something much more conservative, um, just put it in investment funds, we would have more to work with, right? We wouldn't be constantly worried about the state of employees. We wouldn't be worried about getting audits done. We wouldn't be worried about inventories. We wouldn't be worried about the, the, the number of tourists that are coming into the country at any given moment. We wouldn't be worried about the drama going on that other businesses aren't doing what they're supposed to do and they're stealing our business because they're simply not paying their taxes and, and hoping not to get caught or they fled the country uh, because they don't want to pay their taxes and they took whatever bank account they could and made a run for it and now their places are running and no one's paying their employees and this drama just is real it's a very very everyday thing um, and so your description of why you want to do things and and what your end goal is may work out for you but as someone in this exact space in a very similar beach here in Nicaragua all of those things to me are exactly in spite of those things, I would love to have a slower pace of life, but I invest in hotels because I really enjoy the higher pace of life most of the time. I'm, you know, willing to to deal with additional drama and additional stress and everything because I like what it does for the community. And of course, I'm sure you would like what it does for the community. Uh, but it's very important that the goals you state would not lead me as an investor in Nicaragua to invest in Nicaragua at all or to especially invest in something like a beach hotel where you're going to have that interaction with the community and interaction with expats and so much opportunity. And once you're a business person locked into a beach, uh, a be a beach community, right, you can't move. And unlike being in, say, the city, if you're in Managua and you have a physical location, chances are the amount of interaction you have with your neighbors is minimal. You're ones who share a wall with you a little bit, but the amount that you are involved with your neighbors and your community on the beach compared to in something like Managua is a hundred or a thousand times. It becomes a completely community-based thing rather than I'm just another anonymous person in the big city. So keep in mind that once you're in, every little bit of community drama becomes part of your drama. It's pretty much inescapable and you are now essentially a permanent mar part of that community. It's so difficult to sell and move on. It is not a transparent thing. So it's a major commitment to that exact location and saying not just this community, Papoyo, but this exact spot on the beach is going to be a place that all the things that happen there are going to be a part of your life from now on. Um, that, can be, that can be a little bit overwhelming. So just consider that when you're considering this entire picture. Does it make sense for you? It can if you, if you just love the process, if you absolutely know what you're doing. Also be aware with construction that uh, in a lot of cases, your construction knowledge from North America may work against you down here. In some cases, of course, it could be beneficial, but it does make it very tempting to try to do things in a way that are not super cost effective or efficient for the Nicaraguan materials and expertise and weather and so forth. And so we see from time to time, expats coming in with exactly that mindset and then ending up stuck trying to apply methodologies that don't end up making sense in the space and their building costs are, are out of line with the local market, which once again would make profitability on the business that much more difficult. This is, no matter how you look at it, this is going to be a game of tight margins and you're going to be consuming your own labor in order to keep the place running in the hopes of making your retirement money. So simply, I would say, most importantly, look at what is realistic that you could potentially make on a property like this. It's never going to be full. We're not a big tourist destination with a constant flow of tourism. It's just not who we are. And, um, you know, a lot of the year you're going to be empty. A lot of the year you're going to be slow. You can't look and say, oh, we're going to have 80% occupancy rates for the year. That is beyond unrealistic. Uh, and so consider all these things, consider all the staff you have to have, the overhead that there's going to be, that you have to have lawyers and accountants and all that, of course. And at the end of the day, say, what is your potential profit going to be on a month to month basis or a year to year basis? And compare to what if you did nothing with your money? What if you put that into an S&P 500? I would be really, really careful of not investing into a business that can't do as much with your money as if you did nothing.
that's a very scary place to be, that all of your profits are based off of consuming your nest egg rather than enjoying it, right? You, you will go farther doing things some other way. Considering how busy we are with our hotels, having uh, it create a slower pace of life for us than we had in the United States is not exactly how I would describe it. It's also not what we're looking for. So everyone has their own mix of things that makes them happy. And, and if this is what you're looking to do, um, absolutely feel that you should go down this path. Um, just be very careful and set your expectations accordingly. For me, I have wanted to have my own restaurant specifically uh, since I was quite young, since I was about 18, 19, I got into restaurant touring and found it very rewarding. When I was young, both my wife and I worked in hotels and bootstrapped our company, which is a business consultancy um, from that position of having worked in, in hotels. And so that is something that we've always talked about having a boutique hotel together since we were first uh, just getting married. And uh, so these are meaningful things for us and, and something that kind of is a dream come true to be able to do these things. And she's always wanted to live on the beach. And there's just a lot of things that come together for us. We're also younger than retirement age. I don't know what age you guys are. So I'm not uh, not saying that you're made for you. You could be quite a bit younger than us for sure. But I still work full time both doing this channel. For those who didn't notice, I put in a lot of time on this channel. But all also, I have a full-time day job, right? I'm in a business consultancy. I work with thousands of customers every day across a lot of different spaces. And so a lot of the things that we do with our businesses here, right? We have our own web hosting company. We have our own web design company. We have our own tel telephony company. We have our own, you know, IT support company. We have a lot of these businesses um, that support the businesses we have here. We already have, we're already doing that job. And so they're able to service them and make it that much easier for us. Uh, so these things kind of feed off of each other to some degree. That's another important aspect. I'm already going to be in the office all day. I'm already going to be working hard. I'm already going to be doing these things. So having this extra business that makes me a little bit happier, a little bit more excited because I'm a business venture guy, right? Like I like starting businesses, but I'm not out to do it for the money. I do it because I love creating jobs and I love the variety of life that comes with it and the excitement that comes with it. And so I do it for very specific reasons. And maybe those reasons or something similar are going to be what makes sense for you. I just want to make sure you're going into this with your eyes wide open and running very careful numbers and not assuming because it is so tempting. Everybody, when they come to, and we've got lots of videos on this, right? When you come to any place that you vacation and you see the beach, everyone jumps to, we're going to live off of um, this, this beach investment. And if that was something that actually worked reliably, then everybody would do it. I don't know anyone in my entire ecosystem of friends who wouldn't live off of a beach restaurant, hotel, or bar if that was an option open to them. And, and when you come to the beach, I don't know a single person in all of Nicaragua that is successfully doing that. There, there's places that are making it, but they're all making it because of some other reason. None of them are making it based on that one thing alone. It is simply uh, so, so in violation of general business principles, right? You can't make money doing a thing that everyone wishes they were doing unless they weren't able to do it. And so um, understanding that that is the position you're going into, that every aspect of what you're doing is fighting the things that are your goals. It's, it's not expected to make money. It is not expected to be profitable. It is not expected to beat the market. It is not expected to be easier than working in Canada. It's not expected to be relaxing. It's, a, it's expected to be really difficult in all those areas and hopefully rewarding in others. Maybe you will get lucky. Maybe you have the perfect formula and you are, are so good at this, right, that your design and your construction and your management and all those things are going to overcome the natural barriers and you're going to beat what the market is able to do. Um, but all of this... That's just when you're up against the expats. And one of the reasons that the expats struggle so much is that we're up against Nicaraguans who are able to do all this with local funding that you can't get, with local labor that you can't get, with local family access and resources and connections that none of us have. And that gives them such an advantage that there's tiers of advantage in this system, in every business system. If you were to reverse this and go to Canada, you'd have the opposite happening, right? You have all those connections. You have all the intrinsic knowledge. You have the family connections and, and employees and, and people you can trust ready to go. And you can jump on things at a moment's notice. And you have access to the local bank financing 
something and all those things. So it's all those things working against you. So uh, get down, ask your questions for sure. Let me know more about what you're thinking, which things ring true, which things you think don't really apply to you. Um, how, you know, how does this change your thinking, if at all? Uh, do you have additional concerns? So on and so forth. And uh, if you would like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee right up here at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. Link is in the description as well, as is my email. People ask me all the time, can I get your email? Over and over and over again. And I'm like, it's everywhere. How can you not find it? And I keep mentioning it. it's down there. And they repeat, can I get it? And I'm like, I send it to you over and over again. It's amazing. It's I just can't send my email to people. I don't know. And uh, we also have this membership thing. If you want to join, uh, that allows you to do a monthly membership and help contribute to the show uh, on an ongoing basis, which really does help out. We have all these cameras and software and stuff that uh, are required for making this show. And I really appreciate all the help that everyone gives me. I'm about to go get this removed and the same thing on my knee removed, not the same thing, but my knee patch hopefully is being removed uh, today. And I am ready to hit the live stream, which I will have already seen you guys on by the time you're seeing this. And I will see all of you tomorrow.